Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. Today, we'll be taking a look at the top 10 champs that pros are playing on patch 13.8. We'll be grading the champs in 5 categories that show their strong points, so you can decide which ones you'll be picking up based on how they fit your playstyle. We'll start things out in the top lane with Fiora. No matter the meta, she's a champ that always does pretty well when played by top players due to her ridiculously high skill ceiling and ability to 1v9 games. She's a pretty safe blind pick, since she always ends up winning the split push game eventually. That said, you probably want to ban Mouth, since he counters her hard early and can make it tough to reach that point. Outside of that matchup, she has a pretty good early game, with Doran's shield, second wind, and grasp of the undying making her really hard to kill early. Her lane priority isn't great pre-Tiamat, so her rating in this category is kind of meh. Her item flexibility is also pretty mid. You'll go Divine Sunderer or Gore Drinker every game, with some decent room for making choices after that. Of course, Fiora maxes out the Scaling Powder category, being an absolute monster once you make it to late game. The other top laner that pros are loving right now is Poppy. Despite technically being a tank, she plays more like a bruiser. Unlike other tanks which have a ton of bad matchups, Poppy's a super safe blind pick. She does ridiculous damage for being a tank and has great gank setup, which is a deadly combo. An early kill can lead to you snowballing out of control fast. Due to her OP trading and having AoE damage from her Q, you'll always have the option of getting Pryo in lane. Her item flexibility is also rated pretty high. You can swap between Sunderer and Frostfire, and have the option to slot in some Bruiser items like Sterex and Black Cleaver over tank items later on, depending on how damage heavy you want your build to be. In terms of one-on-one -on -one ability and her ability to lock down single targets and teamfights, Poppy scales really well, but her lack of AoE CC like other tanks deducts a bit from her score in the scaling department. Before we get on to the rest of our pro picks, here's a quick word from one of our newest course creators, General Sniper. Hey everyone, General Sniper here. If you want to learn how I hit Challenger at age 12 and hit rank 1 multiple times, check out my course on Pro Guides, where you'll also get access to 500 other lessons and boot camps for only $7.99 a month with no commitment. Click the link and check it out at ProGuides.com. Alright, now let's get back on topic. Taking a look now at the jungle, Gragas is making a back-to-back -back appearance here. Despite being so broken for so long now, Riot is completely ignoring him. In fact, they nerfed his only real competition, J4, this patch, making him stand out even more as a top pick. With no real counters and him being a good flex pick, he's got a perfect score as a blind pick. His early game is one of the best in this role, since he has great ganks and has the mobility to escape from bad situations, so nobody can ever really punish you for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. For such a big guy, he also has surprisingly high tempo, so you're able to control the map really well early, which leads to strong objective control as the game goes on. His build flexibility does leave a lot to be desired. You're basically always just going to be an AP nuker, unless you want to build tank and be useless. Due to it being kind of hard to actually reach the enemy backline in late game teamfights, he does lose out on some scaling power rating. That said, if you can drop some big ol' bombas on the enemy carries, you'll absolutely delete them. Hecarim is the other jungler for us to talk about. He's another pretty strong blind pick. He struggles a bit against hard CC, but since you can use his ult to buffer it, he's not as hard countered by it as someone like Master Yi maybe. In terms of one-on-one, -on -one, he isn't actually that good of a skirmisher early on, but due to his super fast clear speed, you can avoid the enemy jungler entirely and just path to gank lanes and get fed that way, so he still scores 5 out of 5 in this department. His objective control isn't that great on his own. Hecarim needs a team that can play around him and cater to his needs. His item flexibility is really good, able to swap between entirely different item builds and rune pages depending on both team comps. His scaling falls right about above average. How well you do late game depends heavily on your build and how well the enemy team comp can cut you. Now, for the mid lane, our first pick is Annie. While she does have some lanes that are kind of annoying, you aren't so hard countered that you just die over and over. And you'll still always be able to fulfill your job later, so she ranks decently as a blind pick. On her own, Annie's lane phase is kind of meh, so she scores a bit low in the early game department, although she does have really good gank setup. Her ability to get lane priority isn't too great, so it deduces some points in this category, but when you actually get into the objective fights, there aren't many champs that bring more to the table. Her itemization flexibility score is low. You can choose between Leandri's, Rocket Belt, and Ludens, but no matter which item you go with, her playstyle is going to remain pretty much the same game to game. Her scaling is super solid, with the ability to delete carries and still do decent damage over time against tankier foes as well. The only reason she doesn't have a perfect score here is that she's immobile, so you'll often need flash to reach backline carries in teamfights. Our other mid laner is Akshan. He's really strong, but only in the right situations. 
Akshan needs to win lane to get a lead and then roam and snowball the rest of the map to do really well. Since he has quite a few bad matchups in the current meta that make it really hard to do that, you really probably don't want to blind him. If you do get a good matchup, he's super oppressive, giving him a high rating in the early game. His ability to constantly chip away at his foe while simultaneously wave clearing with his boomerang also gives him great lane priority. On top of that, he has insane map pressure, since anytime he's not showing mid, it could potentially be a roam, forcing enemy laners to play safe or risk dying for free. His item flexibility is pretty much non-existent. Scaling-wise, he does pretty well. He has really high damage output, can make game-winning picks, or, more importantly, game-saving revives. That said, he does lose out a little bit here due to his short range making it hard to get off lots of damage in late-game teamfights. Akshon is a champ that sees one of the steepest increases in win rates as you go up in rank, but he isn't a champ where you need to have crazy mechanics to do well. It's all just a bunch of know-how, which means it's all teachable. And of course, our elite coaches over at ProGuides.com are always ready to help with stuff just like that, so head on over and book your session now. Moving things down to the bot lane, our first pick is Misfortune. While she is a really big lane bully, she can struggle with foes that get in her face like Yasuo, Samira, and Engage supports, so she isn't a perfect blind pick. When not dealing with those foes, her early game is really good. You can't really hard force like a kill lane AD carry such as Tristana might be able to, but you can basically guarantee your foes will be stuck under their turret. As such, she scores super high in the lane prio category, and her ult makes her an insane skirmisher when fighting for objectives. Her item flexibility is really high for an ADC. You'll always go Kraken into Infinity Edge, but she has tons of situational items that you can go with after that point. A lot of people claim MF falls off super hard, but her scaling definitely isn't that bad. Her ult can absolutely melt entire teams, including tanks, and her autos hit super hard. Her only real weaknesses are her immobility and lack of range, but those are hardly enough to call her bad late. Our other bot laner is Karthus. Karthus is probably the most reliable AP pick any bot lane carry main could add to their pool. He's been one of the highest win rate bot lane picks for years regardless of the meta. He doesn't have very many counters, making him a good blind pick. You will probably want to ban Renata though, simply because she makes it really hard to teamfight later. With his high damage output, it's hard for almost any opposing lanes to trade with you. But you also can't force on them unless they're really low range, so he just gets an above average rating for his early game. He does an amazing job of getting prio in lane and can do decent damage in skirmishes, but he doesn't have a huge impactful factor, so again he just scores a little bit above average here. Item flexibility wise, he doesn't have much going for him. You can't really build to adapt to different situations. Karthus's only job in teamfights is to go in, die, and then do more damage while in his passive. Of course, Karthus has some ridiculous scaling. The nice thing is, even if you get blown up in fights, you're still guaranteed to do insane amounts of damage. Just make sure you don't forget to ult before you lose the window to do so. Now, let's look at some supports. Rakan may have been nerfed this patch, but that nerf has changed basically nothing for him. He's still overall the best support in the current meta. There are some champs that can make lane a bit tough, but nothing is unplayable, and you can always make it up later in the game with his grab bag of utility. This gets him a pretty high blind pick rating. He provides a nice well-rounded kit for laning. The bit of engage, bit of sustain, makes it possible to fight and go for trades, but you're heavily limited on how strong your ADC is. He provides next to nothing in terms of getting lane priority, but once actually in a skirmish, his CC combo makes him an insanely powerful pick for setting up allies for an easy win, so he scores high in the objective department. With multiple items and rune builds to go with, Rakan is one of the most flexible support picks. You can range from enchanter to tank to damage amping utility bot. His scaling is pretty crazy too. He works well on both offense as an engager or defense as one of the best peeling champs in the game, so you can always adapt to different comps needs. Finishing off our list, we have Alistar. After multiple buffs in a row, the cow is now a super strong power pick, even able to be blinded since there's no real counters to him. His early game is super strong. His ability to all-in is unmatched, but if your foes are playing too safe, you can just go for roams instead. That said, against double ranged foes, you can be shoved in, leaving him with low lane priority. But when you actually get to the objective fight, a flash combo can be enough to decide the fight in an instant. Alistar is surprisingly flexible with his builds. He has four strong keystone choices in Guardian, Aftershock, Glacial Augment, and Phase Rush, and can swap between multiple item builds as well. His scaling is pretty good, but not great. A flash combo can be a great way to start a fight, but it's also easy for foes to react to it with their own flash, especially in the late game when there's tons of vision everywhere and you can't find a good flank. And that about wraps things up for our top 10 champs that pros are playing on patch 13.8. 
Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on what's going on in the meta. And if you're really serious about getting better at League, don't forget about our website, ProGuides.com. Until next time, good luck out there on the Rift. Later.